from audio tech to streamers, the audio market in India really saw a boom during the COVID years, giving platforms like Spotify accelerated growth. But what really changed and what changes are here to stay? After five years of operations in India, how does the global streaming major Spotify think about building on the consumer and market trends to secure its future growth? How is Spotify tailoring its business plans and product offerings and marketing campaigns to suit the Indian audience? I have with me today Amar Singh Batra, Managing Director of Spotify India and General Manager for the streamer South Asia, Middle East and Africa markets and Neha Ahuja, Head of Marketing at Spotify India to break down what it takes to make noise in a complex media and entertainment market. Uh, Amar, let me ask you, of course, now Spotify has been in India for five years now. Um, Quickly tell me about some of the highlights of that journey. What are some of the opportunities that you see also now, but uh, you know how it's been previously and also some of the challenges of cracking the India market. Uh, walk me through the five year journey. No, I think the last five years, I think it's been a breeze. Uh, uh, Spotify has worldwide been, uh, you know, about 16 years. India is just five years, so we're very, we're still very young in the market. We have actually focused on the localization piece. Spotify is a global, global, global uh, company with, uh, you know, 184 countries. We are in about 600 million plus, uh, you know, listeners around the world. But focusing on the local market, uh, you know, taking India and going deeply into India has been one of the, you know, strengths that the way we focused, from product localization to, you know, curation of content to launching localized programs around for artists, for creators, uh, for, for even, even focusing on regionalization of the music. I think that's been a various aspects. The Indian popular music, which is iPop, which is coming up in a big way now, uh, where artists from India are succeeding, uh, not only in Virginia and abroad, it's like the Punjabi music and so many of them. So there we have launched programs like Radar India, fresh finds, and we've done masterclasses around the country to bring more and more artists to get insights around how best they can, uh, you know, bring their music onto, onto, onto Spotify. We will also launch many creator programs, uh, you know, for these artists, and also in the podcast space where we do uh, help creators come in and uh, use, utilize Spotify to reach out to uh, listeners around, around the country. Uh, so in that, I think, but on the other side of it, we believe that the habits of listening to music was, though, though, though I think music has been, you know, people have been listening to music for many, many years digitally, but the real habit of listening to music and recommendations and creating playlists, it all started happening in the last four or five years. And there I believe that the 600, uh, you know, plus playlists that our team has been curating and some of these playlists are really the flagship playlists of the country today. And we have made this in various languages. Uh, in If you go to Tamil, there is a playlist there. If you look at Telugu and so on and so on. So we focus in different languages. We also created brand awareness. When we came in, uh, people were not used to pay for music. I think uh, it, is, it is lost mostly what free people listening for free. There also we have brought a big change. And today uh, the propensity to pay or the willingness to pay is actually gone up. And we are many millions of people in India are now looking to pay for music, which is a huge positive shift. Uh, you know, the shift from uh, uh, free music to now paying for music, but I'll, I'll come to that point. But Neha, let me just quickly take from you also in terms of the five years, the past five years, if you could give me like the top three highlights. You've been with the brand since it started up and it was a startup in India five years ago and you were the fourth employee there. Um, so tell me, just give me like the top three, you know, uh, moments uh, of for Spotify, like wrap it up for us. When we launched in the country, we were the eighth music streaming app, right? So mm -hmm. we were pretty late to the party. Yes. And uh, now looking back, I think pretty proudly we can say that we are now the market leaders when it comes to consumption. We are, uh, you know, the most loved brand, um, you know, when it comes to music streaming among youth. So it's been a, it's been a really good journey. A few things have worked for us. Um, Regionalization first, aspect, for instance. Hundred yeah. percent. I yeah. think re we definitely acknowledge that it's it's not going to be uh, one size fits all, and music is consumed in many languages. So obviously, when you're talking about music, it cannot be uh, you know in one language, right? So mm -hmm. we did acknowledge that. 
Um, I think also too, when it comes to uh, you know marketing, there's always a sedu seduction of how can I be different? And mm -hmm. when there are already you know so many brands, I there is this how can I stand out? I think we didn't give into that. We focused a little bit more on relevance mm -hmm. uh, than differentiations. Very importantly, uh, we played to the category codes. It was not about Spotify has this or this feature. It was about what music does to you and mm -hmm. music is a grease. How Indian consumers, of course, wanted everything free in terms of music. And OK, fine, we are a value seeking nation. Consumers, you know, the free tag is uh, means a lot. And we've seen that in other streaming categories, right? We saw that, of course, last year with the IPL when it was streamed free. And it was this explosion that happened in terms of viewership. Now, how do you balance that, right? How do you, what are your um, uh, pricing strategies uh, given this sort of dilemma that Indian consumers, you know, want free music, but there's also this shift to now paying music. Who are the ones who are paying for the music? Tell me a little bit about your pricing strategy. Yes, there is a baggage of uh, you know, which happens with everything in India. There's a, you know, there's a habit of value seeking. I think, but that's changing. And for that, I think the areas where we are kind of making it easy for them is by working on plans uh, and offers which suit everybody. So we have offers from uh, monthly offers to, to, to uh, annual offers, and these are priced very comparatively. I mean, if you look at the price in India versus price in US, a price in India would be about 119 rupees per month versus US, which would be 10 and $11 a month. So that's a huge difference out there. Uh, similarly, if you look at an annual plan that we have, which is you know, about you know, less, than, uh, less than 100 rupees a month. So that actually is you know, less than a price of a coffee, uh, what you people pay for it in India. So we have offers like, uh, we have products like uh, Duo, which is for two people. We have products like Family Plan, which is for multiple people in the household, I think you can be there. There are student plans. And on top of it, we have also kind of gone down to even that, uh, you know, behavior in the country where we used to have this sachet culture, uh, which FMCG companies have, you know, used it in the market where they've realized people don't want to buy the full pack. So if you don't want to buy the full month, we have an offer for one, one day or one, one week, which is a premium mini. Uh, which is priced at seven rupees for a day or 25 rupees for a week, week. And these are the kind of changes and options we have. And on top of it, we have also made it very easy for people to pay because now we have, uh, in, in addition to the, uh, to the debit cards and the credit cards, we also have UPI integrations and so on, which I think people have you know, become so habitual in this country. UPI is a technological revolution around the world, which is going around there. And I think we are kind of a, you know, also riding on that wave where we are giving that option to the consumers and that's doing very well for us. Pricing strategies that you've introduced, even with the whole, um, the sachet music, like you said, um, how has that helped your user growth? Can you put that in numbers for me? The premium mini is a very interesting starting point for a lot of our users, I think a lot of listeners. I think so people who are on free service, when they look at moving to Spotify main service, which is the premium service, which is the one month or annual plan, they generally sometimes, many times they start with premium mini because that allows them to experience the benefits of the premium and there are no ads, you can download uh, you can download music. So there are many other things which I think the people move from and then once they kind of uh, use that service, they move to the main service. So I think I would I would say that premium mini is a is becoming a very, very popular service for us, popular plan for us, but it's still at the stage where it's giving people from moving from free to paid much faster. So I would say about 15, 20 percent of our you know, you know, premium base is actually getting started from mini as such, you know. I think uh, the last year, one year, our growth has been uh, fabulous. I think uh, this has been the best performing year in terms of overall use, you know, user growth. The number of people we added last year was more than 
what we added in the first two two years or two and a half years of our you know existence in india and in terms of other content as well when it comes to podcasts what are you seeing happening there can you t- can you just like give me a few insights on on what's going on there as well mm-hmm. so i think podcast adoption definitely mm-hmm. is on a great trajectory right now um i think uh, not very recent numbers but one out of every four user has dabbled with you know podcast uh when it comes to at least the spotify app so i think they're definitely not shying away from exploring this as a mm-hmm. uh, you know whether it's for entertainment or it's for really you know upgrading and updating themselves so a lot of that is happening as well in terms of what is getting consumed um i would say that the top genres are uh, self help mm-hmm. uh motivation uh, a lot of spirituality uh but also keep me posted so you know some news and some uh, you know updating uh, yourself is happening as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. yeah what's happening on the advertising front we briefly spoke about how uh, users really don't want to listen to those ads on spotify right but th- how do you then work up that ad revenue what percentage of it uh, where does it stand currently and what what sort of advertiser cohorts are you are you going after dig a little bit deeper into what's happening on the ad front yeah no i think indians uh, are probably one of those uh, few people around the world where we we are quite we quite like our ads actually i think uh, i also believe i think sometimes we make great ads in this country so but i think we have building a very interesting business here and i think we about uh, you know on the ad sales because as we have built a very nice audience and i think the uh, brands are wanting to participate with us in in this journey and uh, whenever we speak to any brand do we believe that there is a interest in music is extremely high and uh, luckily for us we are at the center of that you know uh, the whole culture of music and uh, we have about 400 plus brands who have participated with us and uh, built their campaigns with us and it is getting uh, even better we have built a pretty large now uh, a direct sales team which is servicing uh, our brand partners in various parts of the country and it's also a cult brand we are also a cult brand in a way so it was pretty exciting to see how that how that panned out so so i think the uh, in the in the coming years i think we are looking for more and more interesting collaborations uh, on 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 the on on the ad side of it and uh, i can say that uh, we are also trying to also improve uh, uh, various offerings uh for example the ad studio that we are launched uh, or we are looking at you know the podcast monetization that we are launching mm-hmm. so these are kind of things that we are bringing out there so that you know brands can come and participate with us and even work with on playlisting or or or, or regular features regular regular ad ad, ad uh, components right. that we have right so that's that's what's yeah. happening what did you mention about the podcast amar could you just uh, go back there you said something about a yeah, podcast absolutely. Yes. so i'm i'm on the podcast side we just launched a span and uh, it is a, it is a it's a you know it basically we believe that uh, there there is a huge audience which listens to music but generally around the world you've seen about 30% of our audience also listens to podcast a uh, podcast in india is is a pretty interesting uh, you know uh, opportunity and at spotify we have been uh, carefully cultivating it uh, from from the beginning where our focus has been to help indian creators bring out the best content because our focus has been just like the way we do in music is to bring more local creators and on that part of that we have initial part of our journey in, in india building podcasts we actually brought uh, build great podcasts on our own also like you know original ips but our larger strategy has always been to help creators and other content producers to come on the platform and distribute their content and there we have been focusing uh, very very well on um bringing creative programs like we do podcasters day we also done two podcasters day so far and we want to do we, we want to do one every year at least and then we have programs like uh, we call it a program called level up where we are helping creators uh, go out there and take them from a level of starting you know to start becoming a podcaster to helping them scale and this is a this is a belief we have because i think like unlike unlike music which is much more organized as an industry uh, podcasting is at the creator level is still fragmented 
And we believe we are the best place to aggregate and help our you know, creators. And while we do that, we also want brands to participate with them and help grow these creators. So that's where the podcast monetization piece will come. Even though Spotify is a streamer, but you're taking all these experiences offline, working with lots of brands. And then, of course, you have this iconic property that you do every year, which is the wrap. And uh, tell me a little bit about the genesis of that as well. But uh, how has it fared for the India market? And again, that, that point about Indianization of your uh, strategies. So tell me how that plays out in something that, like the wrap, for instance. Globally and also now in India, I feel that this has become a cultural moment, right? I mean, come December or actually come end of November, we see that, you know, suddenly brands and artists and users are all wanting to talk about it. Uh, actually, even before Spotify starts talking about it. So I think that's the power of consistency and, you know, building a franchise uh, over years. I think talking about, uh, you know, genesis of how Wrapped came about, um, I think it's really about it's rooted in data, right? It's rooted in data. Right? I think I think it's a it's a marriage of two things. Richard. One, I think it is Spotify is sitting on very very rich data, right? So it is it is using that data, but it is also very deep rooted in the consumer insight of how users enjoy this whole look back culture, right? We always like looking at hey how the year was, looking at you know past photographs, hey what happened then. So. It, it is really about a marriage of look back culture and marrying that with such rich data mm -hmm. and also seeing it from the lens of the user. So if you, I mean, if you've, uh, you know, tracked wrapped, it's not really about Spotify putting out great, uh, you know, creative assets. It is about millions and millions of users sharing how they have consumed, uh, you know, music through the year. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about users, artists and you know, millions of other, you know, sort of... Uh, including other brands. Including other... I mean, this year, we... I mean, I was really like, uh, you know, so glad to see. There was so always a question see. whether it's organic or inorganic when, so when other year, brands come say, on board. So this year, I can yeah. say all organic. I mean, we saw uh, so many brands just latched onto it organically. We saw civic bodies, you know, latch onto it organically. Political parties, you know, uh, you know, following the format and the template of Wrapped mm -hmm. talking about it. So it's really become that lingo and language. Um, but I think that does not happen with only the brand speak. I think over the years, what has worked for us is millions of listeners and thousands and thousands of artists have, you know, sort of put out their rap card and shown, uh, you know, uh, uh, what and how rap plays out for them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's the cumulative effect of everyone talking together. What is your general sort of mix when it comes to your media vehicles? Mm -hmm. It's of course a streamer, digital. Tell me, give me a little bit of insight into your media mix and your marketing spends. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe not talking absolutes, but I think we, uh, typically have a very multimedia kind of approach, right? Uh, we do believe that TV still has that mass reach. So whenever we have a, you know, a message which we feel needs to reach out to millions of users, maybe probably about, you know, building the category, talking about role of music, that needs a, a you know, a very mass reach. We'll probably use TV there, right? But regional, mm -hmm. regional TV as well. Uh, but then music is very, very specifically and differently consumed uh, by you, right, or by different fans. So uh, there we do very sharp targeting using digital, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the way we want to approach a Punjabi streamer is very different from the way we want to reach a hip hop user or where we will find a hip hop uh, listener will be very different from where we will find a very filmy uh, mm -hmm. listener. So I think choosing the right platform there uh, and the right kind of messaging gives us this opportunity to talk a little bit more like a fan mm -hmm. ourselves. So uh, we do leverage digital a lot. Uh, we've also used outdoor, uh, uh, you know, in our past campaigns. Yes. Uh, but outdoor, not really about blasting one message. Uh, but outdoor for us is also making sure that, you know, it becomes a digital campaign, right? So we put, we put out one message on outdoor, but we see that because it's so relevant and because it's, you know, shareable. it's so shareable that we see listeners and artists, you know, clicking pictures of that and bringing it back to digital and, you know, then uh, sort of uh, yeah. making it viral. So yeah. we, we see that a lot. 
yeah. or billboard somewhere that just goes all across the internet and it's everywhere let me uh, let me close the conversation with you amar and just ask you like we've heard like what happens with uh, with the rap right how it takes a life of its own and you really don't have to do anything you just have to sit back and you know watch it play out and people share it and but there's also a risk involved with that right because it's a brand asset it's your ip so just sum up the philosophy of perhaps Uh, letting you know this this thing about letting go of your brand and letting others also have a say in how to use it how to experiment with it give me your closing thoughts on that yeah i think the if, if you look at the spotify logo today i mean i think uh, that's just, let's start with that i think it's i think it's one of the where you know i've been now 6 years at spotify so almost and i 5 years uh, we have been uh, almost live now and i think the logo itself is a uh, is something that is in different colors and different ways so i think in a way spotify has been quite different from many brands out there and i think wrapped is we know it is like it can go uh, you know and people can have great great memes and great great kind of a stuff which can which sometimes may not look good but i think that's that's where i think the beauty of the you know whole uh, internet uh, you know a property like that is so i think that Uh, if if you look at one of the biggest success in you know in terms of product and social and uh, ugc content i think it is wrapped i think the amount of shares that we get so i think we we don't we don't us ourselves promote anything which is out there but our listeners our users i think they they obviously share with each other i think it's a great moment it's like a it's like the end of the year moment which i think is something that we owe it to our listeners every every year so i think it's so far working well but i think that's always uh, you know like uh, those questions i think and i think you have to manage some of that as we go along but i i think we have been fine so far yeah mm-hmm. well we wrap on that question and answer thank you so much for your time amar thank you so much for your time neha it was lovely chatting with you thank, thank you. you thank you so much it was great being here